Hello VC, another video. Um, I've done this already a couple of times now and um, I, was so, I was very happy and excited about the responses I got. And also I was in contact with another um, vinyl collectors and, and some of them uh, real experts I must say. So let me give you some short uh, shout outs here. One of them of course is for Mike and his channel. Now he made a couple of videos about Bill Laswell, the amazing progressive wizard from New York. Well, actually he's from Illinois, but it's a different story. And um, you should check it out. Mike is really an expert on that issue and uh, I really enjoyed his, his uh, presentation. Another one is uh, Corey's VC channel, uh, where I saw a really nice video about Pink Floyd. Look it up. And of course, uh, Diana. The Digging in the Crate channel. Uh, she made the second part of her uh, crowd rock collection, which is pretty amazing. Um, and also, she revealed in this video that she has absolutely no interest in Kraftwerk. You really should look it up and hear it with your own ears. <laughs> so, uh, let's go on. Uh, this time, uh, I kind of heard again mostly stuff from late 70s and uh, early 80s. I don't know why I'm just a little bit stuck in this time period now. It's not like I uh, listened exclusively only to the sort of a post-punk uh, synthie-pop music of the 80s. I do not, but uh, well, it's a phase it can take for a couple of days or even a week or two. So. Uh, Check this one out. Schneider with a kick, exposed. That's really a, a easy listenable album. Um, sort of in a typical 80s style design. Um, oh, that's a sort of electronic uh, pop album with uh, some uh, typically 80s guitar on it. And uh, that's a nice inner sleeve, right? WA logo. And um, I mean, the sound is uh, the sound is very very 80s like, uh, but I don't mind that. I don't know why this is always um, expressed as something to be criticized. Like, yeah, but it sounds so like the 80s. Yeah, but I like it when album sounds like the 80s. Um, so what next? Uh, <laughs> this one was the debut album by a band called Alien Sex Fiend, who's been sleeping in my brain. Now this is a wonderful album. Uh, it's uh, it has all the uh, Alien Sex Fiend attitude. Um, so it's like a one big mental disaster <laughs> expressed in music. <laughs> Um, I mean, you've got to love the artwork. The artwork really uh, breathes the zeitgeist of the time. So this is an album that came right after the punk movement and uh, is one of the big post-punk uh, records. Um, yeah, it's got tracks like Wish I Was a Dog on it, which is really great, or uh, I'm Her Frankenstein. Um, works very well. Oh yeah, now something completely different. Now I have some prog rock albums here. First of all, this one I really like. It's uh, Stormwatch by Jethro Tull. And the famous flip side. This is a wonderful album, even so it is a bit, even though it is a bit uh, overshadowed by the fact that uh, John Glasgow died during uh, the making of this album, who was uh, basically the third bass guitar player in Jethro Tull, and uh, who had a heart condition. Um, so um, this is the last time you you, you hear him on the record. Uh, it's a uh, it's a wonderful album 
filled with the sense of urgency, I would say, and it's uh, it's one of the great examples of um, of Ian Anderson's lyrics uh, that can be very uh, uh, not as much lyrical, but more like uh, it's almost like a lyrical form of journalism. It's difficult to explain, but he's like he's like a, he's like a chronist, chronist of the times he lives in. So this is a good late seventies album. It's always said that this is like the, th the last album of um, um, of this sort of folky trilogy by Jethro Tull, and yeah, I can understand how you can make the case for that. But it's also very it's very rock driven. I mean, it's one of the more harder albums in terms of electric guitars. Now this one uh, um, is a funny publication. I mean, it's 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 not it's not too rare or something. But this came out like 1974. This is a uh, <laughs> uh, sort of a double album where uh, they put the first two Yes albums into one publication, as you can see here. Um, so. Uh, Inside, you actually have the look of the of the debut album by Yes, which, in my opinion, is a bit underrated. Of course, the Yes fans are mostly focused sort of on the big albums in the middle of their times, like uh, uh, Tales from Topographic Oceans, Close to the Edge, Fragile. But uh, I really like their debut album. There is a certain warmth to it. There is a certain um, uh, psychedelic quality to it that they did not explore in later recordings and uh, um, compared with other bands they actually produced a really wonderful very nice debut album and uh, there are tracks on it which are really wonderful mostly like Yesterday and Today it's a John Anderson composition it's very sweet um, Survival is Really a wonderful track, really foreshadowing, foreshadowing uh, all the all the great music that is to come. Sweetness is great. Beyond and before, Chris Choir song. So, uh, do I have anything else here? Oh yeah, yeah. I was always thinking like bringing a, a CD with me as a last last uh, piece of music to show. If it is uh, something unique or interesting. So let's have a look at this. This is the uh, Throbbing Gristle uh, live box, which came out at the beginning of the 90s and uh, it comes in this carton box, and then you can take out four CDs. So inside all the CDs seem to look the same at the first sight but of course the inlay is sort of double layered so if you start to take out the, the real inlays you get four different pictures uh, from this I think this was uh, designed by Cosi Fanituti from Thurbing Gristle And it shows you sort of the uh, the well, mostly the level of madness that uh, Thorbin Crystal uh, presented in their concerts. Um, and of course, um, this is all uh, music from 1976 to 1970 to 1980, actually. Um, and back in the day, I guess you could not get any more progressive, weird, daring, uh, avant-gardistic. Um, this was really a band uh, on the front lines of experimental music and of thought-provoking music. So, um, probably not uh, the kind of uh, CD box I would uh, listen to every day. But I'm really glad to have it. It's a piece of music history. 
TGBox first limited edition. The camouflage on this box was taken from the original TG uniforms designed and handmade in Paris by Laurence Dupre. Redesigned for this release by Cosi Fanetutti. Artwork by Disinformation. So that's it for now. Bye bye.